A welcome to our AI in Focus segment, where we focus on the latest advancements in artificial intelligence and their impact on the economy and society as a whole. Earlier this year, doctors in Mexico delivered the world's first baby born from an embryo fertilized entirely by machines and guided by artificial intelligence. And joining us now to talk about AI's use in the fertility industry is Kate Talenko. She's the founder and CEO of Corvus Health. Kate, great to have you back on the show. Thank you for being with us. I'm so old, I remember when the first IVF baby was born. So how, can you put in perspective just how astounding is this new technology? Well, the thing that makes a difference here is that it reduces human error and makes the process more consistent and higher quality. And it's important to note that humans were still involved in the process. They gave uh, commands to the, the AI robot to complete the procedure. Then, of course, once the embryo was grown, a human had to implant it into the, the woman's uterus. But the idea is that once these machines become more affordable, it will be more affordable for families to get IVF and more accessible in general. Because right now, the amount of IVF available is limited by the number of embryologists, by the number of fertility specialists. Are we on the verge of something huge when it comes to the med medical field and AI? Because after this breakthrough, how else can we think about applying AI in the medical field? Well, certainly there are three types of tasks that humans perform in healthcare. One is the thought work that's, you know, making the diagnosis, designing the care plan. And that is the type of work that's most easy to be delegated to AI because it's all just data and, and taking symptoms and, and creating diagnoses and care plans. Then the, the second is probably one of the most difficult. That's the, the procedures, doing a colonoscopy, moving a patient in, in bed, uh, doing a surgery. That I think it will take much longer for AI to do. I mean, this is an example with the, um, the fertility robot, um, you know, actually doing these procedures, but it is much more difficult. And then the third task that humans do in healthcare is the emotional work, that emotional support or when you think of mental health care. And we are having AI start to do some of that work, um, and many patients now work with, with AI mental health models, but that is predicated on the patient being willing to talk to a computer rather than a, a real human being. And I see that this area is a little bit more difficult. Uh, so we will see AI making much stronger uh, uh, gains in the, the thought work of the diagnoses, uh, the data analysis. It's amazing to think of about making strides uh, in the case of AI when it comes to sort of emotional IQ and intelligence. So we hear about jobs being taken over by AI machines. It's a constant topic of concern, right? OpenAI CEO recently said that AI can rival someone with a PhD, and this just weeks after saying that AI is poised to take over a good portion of entry-level jobs. So should medical professionals be concerned about their jobs being taken even if that may be a little bit of a ways out. I think eventually there will be a number of jobs that will be replaced by AI. There will be more jobs that are created as well in, in the areas of ethics or AI oversight. We also will need a major overhaul of medical malpractice and medical regulation because right now AI can't practice medicine. It's only humans that can. And someone has to ultimately be legally and ethically responsible for the care that's provided. And also, the fact that in the U.S. we have an incredible health worker shortage. We're short 1 million nurses. Globally, we're short about 10 million health workers. So I, I just don't see in the near term uh, there being unemployed health workers. I see the unemployment being more in the tech industry, in the design industry, not so much in healthcare. So we should be clear, right? While this particular procedure was a success, it's still experimental, right? So what will it take to make it something that can be commercially viable, in your opinion? Yes, we'll have to get FDA approval. It is a piece of you know, laboratory equipment, medical equipment, and it usually takes three to seven years uh, for such a piece of equipment to ultimately get FDA approval. 
And so once it's FDA approved, the fertility clinics have to, have to be willing to pay the millions of dollars to buy such a piece of equipment. Uh, so I, I think we won't see this in your, your neighborhood fertility clinic for another 10 years or more. Uh, and you know, otherwise, I think in, in fertility, uh, you know, more of what's going to make the change is insurance in covering it, which we're seeing more and more insurances are covering uh, infertility care. This is such a fascinating topic. Thank you so much for your insight. We really appreciate it. Kate Talenko. Thank you.